He's known as the king of the south side. You guys need to stand up, put your hands together, and start chanting Frank, 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 Frank. What's up, Chicago? I feel like a like a comedian. All right, fasten your seatbelts, y'all. Investors, contractors, realtors, lend me your fears. Be of good cheer, for I bring you good news tonight. Oh, wait a minute, we interrupt this program to bring you a special announcement. It's now time for Frank's Fun Facts. Here we go. Okay, number one. Y'all out there, that you, you people out there that think this is um, another rendition of HDTV Flip This Show where uh, we're going to do a quick deal and everything's going to go fine and we're going to make $100,000. You may leave because you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong building. Um, if you think also that I'm going to give you some, something to make your life easier, uh, you're going, you may leave because you're in the wrong building. You, this is the job that requires hard work. And if you love real estate, if you love working with people, you're in the right place. I'm going to give you some ideas today, some tidbits today that are going to help you run your business better, help you do what you do better. However, um, I always lead and I always tell people this is hard work. You know, this is not, you're not sitting in, um, and, and, and no disrespect um, here. So if you're a librarian, don't, don't you know, don't uh, tee off on, uh, on me after the thing. So, I mean, so if you're a librarian and you sit, your job is to have people come in. Your not job is not to go out and get the business. Um, as, as a realtor, as an investor, as a contractor, to really make it today, um, you have to go, you have to be proactive. You have to be going out. And I, I applaud every one of you here tonight for, for being here and to proactively um, drive your business. So just don't come here and listen. Take some ideas. Now, you know, I always tell people, take, take one idea. Walk away with the, when, if you scribble down, you know, a bunch of ideas or four or five ideas, take one idea and put it in your business model and make make a difference because you know I, I go to a lot of different events and I learned early like I, I'd write everything down I'd take like crazy notes um, what, what do you call those guys that, in, the, in the court stenographers or whatever? so I was like one of those guys you know when I went to I mean I like, like literally tried to write every word down and then I, I was so overwhelmed that I, I didn't change so this is life is all about changing and I want to encourage everybody tonight to walk out walk out of the room with with um, some connections and it you know when it's over now to make sure you go and shake a few more hands on your way out and get a few more cards and find people that are going to help build your business but more importantly as well um, make sure that you change your business model today if you don't you're an idiot you, you you're wasting your time just don't come to meetings you know i, I there's a lot of people that uh that go to church and they, you know, they go to church and they go to church because that's their lifestyle. They're, but they never listen and they never apply. So all I'm asking you tonight is to listen and apply. So, okay, so golden rule number one uh, on Frank's fun facts is we have to work hard. If we want to, we have to commit. If we're going to make a difference, if we're going to grow and drive our business, we have to do work every day. Uh, rule number two is... Um, Figuring out um, um, the market that you're dealing in. Figuring out, so for example, um, I, deal, I deal a lot of business on the south side. They call me the king of the south side. Uh, I'd rather be, uh, can you please address me? Where, where are you, Josh? Please address me as the king of Chicago land, or the entire land. There you are. Yeah, you're, you know, you're getting out of, I can't throw a baseball that far, so you're. Um, but, uh, hey, you know, so one thing that's interesting about Chicago and the suburbs 
it's almost like there's different countries. The south side is like completely different than the north side. And within the north side, there's different countries within the north side. So one of the things that you have to do is you can't, um, you, you just can't take your realtor's word for on everything. Uh, one of the things I notice is that most realtors, um, they're, they don't do their homework. They do, you know, they run some comps and they hand you the comps and they, they try to fit um, a square peg in a round hole. So they want you to buy a deal or even these, these wholesalers. These guys, I don't know what brand of acid they take, but I, I swear to God, if I even think of taking their, their drugs, I look at their information, I'm like, bro, how do you do this, re you know, it's a full gut job, you know, 25 grand. I'm like, 25 grand? I said, give me your contractor. I said, I'll give them 50 jobs right now. You know, it, you, know you, have to, you have to take responsibility in, the, in this business. You cannot rely, you have, to, you have to do the thinking in here. You have, you know, you have to stop letting people control you. Most, what I've seen, the, the investors that I've seen that have failed, either think they know it all, or they listen to the wrong people. So today, each and every one of you investors in this room is gonna move forward listening to me and doing business with me only. Uh, oh shit, did that come out, did I say that out loud? Uh, <laughs> Joe and Charlie, <laughs> Shirley's like, uh-uh. So anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, I do, I, uh, we do interrupt this for one more, for a quick sponsor um, deal here. So I do have my, some of my team here tonight. I did want, you know, so if you do want to approach them afterwards, uh, they've been highly trained by me. They're, a, they're a lethal assassins in, in the world of flipping. So uh, if you guys, I know I've got Collins in the back and my three lovely ladies in the front. Can you guys, uh, okay, so wave. I was gonna say stand up, wave, whatever y'all wanna do. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, okay, Shirley. <laughs> So anyways, um, the, um, these guys can help you. So what, basically, just a quick note, what I do is I work with investors. I've been doing it for 35 years. I'm a top 1% producer. I eat, sleep, drink, grind. And when I get done, I do it all over again. And then when I get done, I do it all over again. I'm a type A personality. I don't have a shut off switch. I don't. Um, I, I don't rest. I, I don't sleep. I, I just don't. I don't like. I don't like sleep. I think it's a waste of time. So, um, anyways, um, on a on a uh, another note here, we bring what our team brings to the table is off market, on market properties. We analyze properties, and we analyze them correctly. I'll get into that in a second. And also, we have uh, I know great hard money lenders. I know. Uh, private money, I know um, contractors. I've been doing it for 35 years, so, you know, um, I, yeah, I've made a, made a lot of mistakes. You know, I failed my way to success. So, um, what a third of my client, and plus we have a kick ass um, exit strategy, a third of my clients are realtors. So, you know, you'd have to ask yourself, why is a realtor listing? A house with me are they taking the same acid that those wholesalers are with those phony numbers or do they understand the value so what what I bring to uh, investors and you know I the we know the market especially the south side my partner if you call them up right now gave him an address he would tell you what's on the street you can call him you can test him I I've had I've interviewed um, new investors and I've, I've done that and, and uh, I, like a new investor walked in and said, hey, I got a property, I can't remember what it was, 63, 36, uh, Hawaiian or something like that. So I, I said, watch this. So I called up, I said, hey, Reggie, 63, 36, Hawaiian. There's a, uh, there's a commercial building at the corner, white commercial building, so this guy's like, what the? You know, but I mean, that's the kind of, that's what we bring. So um, in, another fun fact, if you, wanna, if you wanna succeed, wildly succeed in your business, become an expert in whatever you do. Keep growing every day, keep 
adding value every day. This is, the, the, you know what the beauty of it is here is the people that are, that are gonna succeed are the people that understand business. Business boils down to creating excessive values to others. I mean, I get a lot of business because I'm incredibly good looking, so I get, but it only lasts so long. And then what I do is create excessive value. I want to know everything there is to know about everything. And so you need to, you need to adapt that man, mantra as well, too. I, wanted, I almost said you need to adopt me, mantra, but I meant mantra. I think that's the right one. Okay, mantra, we'll go with mantra. Uh, but anyways, so um, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's important to be able to identify your market. So one of the things that I do when I look at a, uh, we're, you know, a lot more conservative in the, uh, in our buys than some people are. Um, I, I don't, first of all, I don't listen to wholesalers. When, ho you know, whenever a wholesaler says, hey, you know, uh, I can, yeah, I got this address, man. You want my numbers and my breakdowns and my RVs? And I'm like, no, just give me the address and give me your price and I can do the rest. Because what, like, what I'll do is I'll look at a property and I'm not looking, a lot of a agents will send you uh, closed deals that are year old. By the time you get done buying it, fixing it up, throwing it on the market, those, those, those ones that are year old are gone. And what's important are the ones that are currently listed, um, that, um, that are deal pended, that are a month to two months old, that'll still be on the radar. The ones that are a year old, nine months old, those, those may well be off the radar. Now, if that's all that, that's out there, the appraiser's gonna look at. I mean, appraisers like to go six months back, and then if they can't find uh, the same house six months back, they go 12 months, so they, they'll go back. Some will go back 18 months, maybe even two years, depending on the appraiser, or they go outside of the area to a comparable area to check and, and find a similar property. So what you have to do is if you know there's no comps in the area and you're buying this property, you better understand how, how an appraiser thinks. And you better know, you know, one thing that I do um, with some of my properties too, when we have a challenging property and, and we don't know what it's gonna cost or what it's worth, I got plenty of appraiser friends that I can call up. And I can have them do a quick check for me and tell me this is what they would appraise it for. Or I can, I, sometimes I'll have them come out and I'll pay them a full, you know, I'll pay them, or I'll pay them 300 bucks just to do a, a full blown appraisal. Um, it, very, very important. Uh, invest in your future. Uh, it's, it's a small price to pay than to know you, you were thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 off. You know, I'd rather take a $300 hit than take a uh, $40,000 hit, wouldn't you? Everybody nod your head like the bobblehead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, when you're, um, when, again, when you're looking uh, at values, um, you want, always want to look at the most current, e even stuff that um, is currently deal pendant because it may well be closed by the time your property gets on the market. So if you have, if you see, guys, if you see a $200,000 house um, that you're trying to sell, and you, are you, you figured the ARV for property is $200,000, you want to buy it, and then you've got, um, three properties that are listed and deal pended and they're listed for $180,000, that's a red flag because more than likely those houses are gonna sell for 180 or even substantially less. Maybe those guys are bailing and they're gonna affect the market. Now, that's something that you need to address with your, um, well, if you're an, as an investor or if you're a realtor, you need to address with the investors. Look guys, we could be, well, walking into a landmine, or if it's one deal, I'm, I'll call the agent up, I'll say, hey, what happened on this deal? Why did you sell for so cheap? A lot of times we have investors that are just getting out of business and they bail. So you need to, you need to do your homework. Again, start being proactive. Again, start building value. And feel free to approach any of my people on the team, they'll be more than happy to help you find properties, um, you know, we're a full service deal. I mean, obviously we're not gonna give away all, all our resources, but if you come on our team, your uh, your family, you can use all of our resources. And so we've got everything from A to Z. Um, you know, one of the cool things that are that's happening right now that's gonna be fun to watch is Opportunity Zones. 
So you guys probably everybody's probably heard about them, and you know, you know that you know that they uh, um, they help with the capital gains tax. If you hold on to the property for five years, you get a percent. In seven years, you get a five years it's ten percent. Ten years is fifteen percent off. Uh, over the past ten years, you you don't pay any capital gains tax. So what what I'm seeing now is um, is investors uh, moving in areas that they wouldn't normally move into. So that's why it's something. However, what I will say with a lot of these uh, empowerment zones, uh, opportunity zones, sorry, um, is that you gotta be careful. You just can't go flying into any area, go flying into any block. You know, that's why, you know, when you, if you are going to do that with me, I would tell you where to go. Because I, I have a very, very specific formula. You know, like I, I know people, for example, let's say Roseland, um, you know, opportunity zone. A cl classic opportunity zone. If you go straight into the heart of Rosen, you're going to get crushed. Now, if you go on the perimeter and say work from uh, Washington Heights and work down, um, your your impact is going to be a lot greater. It's a lot of this stuff is not as simple as they make it look on TV, you know. And somebody makes somebody brings home a, a big paycheck. So what? They got they get lucky on one deal. You don't listen to one person because they get lucky. You listen to people that are successful, that have been successful uh, time and time again, because this business can wipe you out. And I've seen a lot of people where they've lost everything, including their marriage and their kids. So make no mistake, whatever you do in this business, make sure you surround yourself with the best of the best. Another Frank's fun fact. I'm gonna to refer to my little paper here because um, I like I like my notepads. I've been using notepads. These, they, you know, I, my data, everything's on this. You know, it's, a, it's how I roll, man. Um, you know, one other thing you want to do is um, you you need to understand the history of your market. So if you're in Portage Park or you're in Chatham, I mean, th those are whole, two different worlds, and they're trending in different directions. Do you, you know, some, some of you own properties in here, I know I've talked to you, some of you are uh, investors. Do you know how, you know, do you know anything about the market you're buying in? Do you know what, uh, how it's trending? Do you know if it's trending, if it, uh, do you know if the values are, are, are sub-market or are they over-market? Because there's, th this business is not a straight line. It's, this business does never really flat lines. It's always shifting in some direction. And there's, there's, there's a lot of mini shifts. So the market could be going up in the Chicagoland area and you have negative shifts going in certain areas. Like on the north side, you'll see a lot of negative shifts that are still occurring because the values have outgrown the median income in the area. And there just isn't enough buyers to pay that higher fee. So they still have to come down. That's still, you know, and yeah, I'm not gonna talk about each uh, subdivision, each area today, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just here to let you know, you need to start paying attention to that stuff. When you talk to your agent, who is Frank Pontro, um, you will, uh, um, you, you need to get that information, you know, and you need to start studying that on your own. You need to take charge of your business. You don't put your business in, um, in somebody else's hand. Demand that information. Make your realtor go to work for you. Make your realtor teach you. You need to educate yourself on what the hell is going on here. Because let, let me tell you something, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's really, really hard to find properties. And it's really, really hard to do a whole a transaction these days. I love it because that's where I'm at my best. And I, I, when, when things get easy, I get comfortable. When things get difficult, stress hits. Stress doesn't kill me, man. Stress brings me alive, baby. And I love stress. So I love being pushed. So I, I don't care. I mean, I, I've had some of my best years when the market crashed. And people are like, oh. You know, people say, oh, this guy's, this guy's you know, doing illegal stuff, man. And you know, I heard all kinds of rumors. And I'm like, you know, OK, dude, keep doing what you're doing and keep existing and getting by. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep grinding and working smart. Guys, work smart, it's important.
so some shifts that are going on right now is a lot of mortgage companies have lost a ton of business. So mortgage companies are going to be shifting in, in, the, uh, in the up upward trend because the, a lot of mortgage companies have lost uh, upwards to 40% of the business because the refi market is gone because of the interest rates, right? So um, they are creating a lot of different programs. And what's important for agents to know is all the programs. So we deal with, you know, we, this helps us close more deals. This helps me rescue more deals. So if I have a deal fall apart, I'm gonna find out why, and then I'm gonna see if I'm plug them into to a different program. There's a, you know, FHA has a 100% financing program right now. Um, they have a doctor program out right now, um, 100% uh, up to $750,000. So there's, there's like a lot of, cra and there's a lot more crazy uh, DPA programs, down payment assistance programs coming out. So fasten your seatbelts, because that's gonna really help uh, improve the market. W rewinding to opportunity zones. So here's gonna be the interesting thing. So there's a lot of movement in the opportunity markets right now. For example, um, in Pullman, there are, they are, there's a company that is building a $40 million spec commercial building. Let me repeat that so it can sink in. In Pullman, they're building a $40 million spec commercial property that would never have happened without the uh, um, Opportunity Zone. So, the, but what, what's happened, and I've seen this with all these city programs, if nobody drives them, if no, nobody gets behind them, if there's not a visionary behind them, then, then nothing happens. So in that particular case, uh, there is a visionary. David Doy is over there and he's, he's um, rapidly changing the landscape in, in that area. Um, a lot of other areas that need a shot in the arm don't have the visionaries. So if those guys come along, you will see a lot of areas like Englewood, 24th Ward, there's gonna be a lot of activity. Stay tuned and put those areas on, on your radar because if you, get people, if you get the right people coming in, selling investors um, to buy and, and uh, cultivate commercial, a lot of these areas are gonna come back a lot faster than, than they should. Um, you may notice, I don't know if I'm the only one that, that catches on to this or not, it's uh, like slightly warmer outside than it normally is. Am I the only one that kind of gets that? No, yes. Um, one, one thing, um, so here, here's a nice little tip, but just put, this is something you need to understand. So if, you're, if you want to sell a property in the winter, and that's when it's going to be done, the most overriding factor for business in the winter for, for bringing people out is the weather. I mean, I, I'm so busy right now. Um, you, you know, I'm surprised I'm not on my phone talking to a client and, and talking here at the same time. So anyways, um, yeah, so weather is, uh, yeah, I've been in the business for 35 years. I've seen all the cycles. Uh, you know, the typical sweet spot for real estate is if you're gonna list a house, you wanna list it between March 1st and August 31st. That's your best time to sell a house or, or um, building, whatever you have, at, uh, for the highest value in the shortest period of time, okay? However, it doesn't mean you can't sell it any other time of the year. It just means that's, get, you have your highest propensity to sell it during that time frame. So. That being said, if this weather stays the way it is, we'll have an incredible winter. So if, you, if you're thinking about holding off and not putting, on your, not putting your properties on the market in, in the winter, be weather sensitive. That's the most, because if it's zero degrees, people aren't gonna come outside. They're just not gonna, you know, you know and, and then you know, stuff doesn't get shoveled, you know, all kinds of problems. Uh, with, with homes, so keep that in mind. That's the, uh, the most important thing for this time of the year. Another interesting thing to keep in mind and watch is what, what are the tax of, taxes doing to, um, um, to uh, properties, to rentals, 
uh, to people who own second homes, condos downtown. So I know a lot of people that have been offloading. Uh, there, there's, there's like their second people. I know a lot of people in the suburbs that own condos downtown. They're getting rid of them because it's too expensive to hold out because their taxes have doubled. So there's a market you want to pay attention to. If you have friends that have properties and they're and it's not their first home and they're in the Chicago land area, uh, put that on your radar to give them a quick phone call and say, hey, uh, just checking in with you. How's that condo working out? You know, um, are you thinking about selling it? Because I'm interested in buying it, or I've got a friend that might buy it. So there's an opportunity, guys, for you to um, to find more properties. Basically, what what is the solution? How do I how do I get more properties? Um, how do I how do I, I some of you are on survival mode. Some of you are you know, are looking to take off and you don't know what to do. A um, couple things. Um, you want to uh, make sure that you expand your areas. So you need to find out what's hot. I'll tell you one area that's hot right now for us is Northwest Indiana. So we just started about six months ago. We've got nine deals on the market in, in Northwest Indiana and we've got three under construction. So we're, we're there's a uh, new area you guys can study and, and figure out uh, if that's an area you want to go down and play. Um, there's other areas uh, that um, we're, we're looking at as well now, too, that we're studying. So um, I encourage everyone in this room to do the same. Make sure that you, you expect, you know, instead of saying, hey, I only want to go, hey, man, I just want to do Albany Park and Portage Park, dude, and I'm cool with that. Yeah, well, you know what? The, the show's over, guys, the curtain's down. You gotta get out and start looking at other areas. So I, I, we'll go anywhere. We're looking at returns. I mean, we'll go you know, all over the place. So if some of you guys have any properties, uh, we're buying. And uh, we're not afraid, well, not every year. I mean, we're not gonna go in certain areas that, that, uh, that are unsaleable. Uh, but I can, you know, we can get into that. It's a whole other Jerry Springer episode. Um, so, when we buy some some gold rule rule of thumbs, when we buy, uh, like I said, we look for uh, we look for value. We determine value by the most recent comps, by the properties that are deal pended, and by what's active. You know, and if I think something is overpriced and it's active, I'm, I'm not even concerned about it because it probably won't sell. Um, we like to look at the outside of the property when we look at it. Um, what's around? What's surrounding the property? See what you know. What you don't realize is a lot of people don't like to buy properties that are across the street from a school, um, across the street from a warehouse, um, across the street from a basketball court or something like that, where there's a lot of activity. Where you know people just don't they don't want to spend two hundred fifty, three hundred fifty, five hundred thousand dollars, come home and there's a gazillion people outside, or there's trucks trucks coming in outside in front of their yard and stuff. They got to worry about their kids running out in the streets. Pay attention to what's outside. If, you're, if you've got a single family home and it's all apartment buildings around you, good luck selling that at, at market value. That's gonna go for substantially less. You, know, you're gonna, you may end up selling that for 60 to 70% uh, on the dollar because nobody wants to live in a house with apartments all around them. Another, another important thing You've got to look at is when you walk in the um, when you walk in uh, um, the uh, the houses. You want to look at your attic heights and your basement heights because if your attic heights are too low, you know if if you you don't have ceilings up around seven feet, six eight, right right around there, you're going to have a problem because um, a lot of people aren't going to look at that as usable space, especially in the basement. So then you you know when you move in then all of a sudden now you got to spend 25 grand to dig down a basement. Now there's a that, that may take away um, your uh, sub substantial part of your profit. Pay attention to the ceiling heights in the in the basements and the attics. If the attic's too low, you got to blow off the top. Yeah. Another thing too is don't look at a ranch like a ranch anymore. Okay, when you look at a ranch, understand that you can blow the you can put a top on that and change the price point of the house and, and, and um, 
make a small ranch into a big house. And so we do a lot, we do a lot of those and we're very successful with that. I got a few smiles out there. Thank you, brother, amen. Um, so um, another thing, people love baths, bathrooms, okay? I mean, I'm not a big fan of going up down the stairs to find a bathroom. I, I don't do that. I don't play that game. So um, a lot of, you know, uh, for example, let's say you get, um, you have a master, like a big master bedroom upstairs, and there's no bath, and you thought, hey, I'm getting real smart, I'm gonna save money, I'm not gonna put a master bath in there, okay? Well, the problem is, uh, now, somebody with bad knees, like myself, is gonna think, yeah, we ain't, you know, I, of course, now, I don't know, some of you out there that are more enlightened like me, we kinda get up every night, maybe visit, you know, a certain room, a few times a night, if you know what, you know what I mean. I'm not traveling up and down the stairs, you know, three times a night. That ain't happening. So um, they're much harder to sell. And what happens is you have more time on the market, which is what's your biggest expense? Your market time, your loss of your use of money. I mean, so what if you, you know, you, you, you get hit with five, you know, five, five thousand dollar surprise charge or whatever. When you got to hold on to a property, or two, three times the, the length you were expecting to, you, where you could have flipped it two more, three, three more times, and you're, so let's say you're, you're expecting R ROI is 20%, then you're losing a hell of a lot more than, than $5,000. So big, big, big point. Um, another thing too is, uh, guys, you know, bungalows weren't made, weren't designed initially to live upstairs. They have 30 inch wide staircases. Okay, they didn't do that to fuck with you. They did that because people were not living up. They were they're addicts. They're storage addicts. So now we come in, we put a base. You know, we got a thing. We got cool showers and and hot tubs and stuff up there. And an investor forgets to widen the staircase, or sometimes you have to move the staircase. Guess what you have? You you have a, you have to figure out how, how the hell do I get my furniture up there. You know, what do I do, cut, cut a hole in the roof? Or actually what I did is I saw somebody pull out the whole window, it was like a, dub, like a double window. They actually pulled the entire window out to get their, their king size furniture in there. Pretty resourceful people. I don't think, uh, you know, that that's gonna be a, that's gonna work on a regular basis. So, just some simple surface things. You know, it, it's, like I said, this is a lot more complex game uh, than you think it is. Knowing, uh, knowing how to lay out a house. So what we do, what my team does, they're very good at knowing how to lay out a house. What works, what doesn't work, what, what mama's gonna look for. Because you know, us guys, man, we just need a TV to watch the Bears lose. Or, um, you know, or win, hopefully next year. 2019's our year. And we need a place to sleep. We need, a, we need our man cave and we're good. You know, I, I don't, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've heard w women, you know, uh, women say, what do you think of it, what do you think of it? He goes, hey, I, I, yeah, I don't know, babe, do you like it? I'm good. You know, so, <laughs> but that's just how we roll, man. We're, we're, we just need a spot, you know, to sleep, a spot to watch our, our sports, and we're good. So you need, you know, you need to understand, you know, what works today and what doesn't work. So back, what worked 20, 30, 40 years ago, it doesn't work today. You know, we, lifestyles are constantly changing. Colors are constantly changing. So we're always staying up with all that. And you have, to, you have to have a pulse on that. If you want to sell your house as fast as possible, you need to take all these things into consideration. Um, on, the, okay, so that's wheel number one. Wheel number two is rehabbing. Um, the lowest price does not win the game. You bring, you know, I, I, I was listening to, we, our team was listening to some lady today. She said, oh, you bring three, four contractors in, you know, let them, you know, get, put some pressure on them, blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing, though. Um, if three out of the four contractors come in and they say, hey, it's 62,000, 61,000, 59,000, okay, all right. Next guy in, 39,000. No, run, don't, don't walk away from that mess. Because that 39,000, is going to end up being like eighty thousand, 
every one of those low ballers don't know what they're doing, they're clueless, and they, not only are they clueless, they don't know how to manage their money. So they will actually, call, they'll spend more money because they're mismanaging, they're not buying the right materials, and they're not spending the right time, they don't know what they're doing. So be careful, um, be, don't be tempting, uh, tempted by the, uh, the lower price. If it's low, if it sounds too good be, to be true in this business, it is. Uh, you want to interview your contractors. So when I get a, I have contractors approach me all the time. So I, I, I'm gonna need to see at least three jobs. And I'm gonna need to see, to talk to at least three people. You know, honestly, can I just kind of talk off the record for a second? I could give a flying fuck what you tell me because what you tell me is gonna be good. Let me hear it from somebody else. You know, and, and that's really what matters because every contractor, especially the shysters, they, they have a rap, man, and they can charm their pants off of you. And, you know, like I said, I've failed forward. So I got, I got, this, I got the skinny. I got to see, I, I, I got to see product. I got to see your finished product. I got to talk to people that are happy with what you've done because if I don't have that, then I, I don't know what I have, but I'm taking high risk. And more than likely, if somebody that doesn't have a website, they don't have um, referrals, they don't have anything, um, then they probably don't for a reason, you know. And I'm not, I'm not the guinea pig, and I don't think you should be the guinea pig either. Make sure um, with some of these new, so with with some of these new investors, we, we obviously want to make sure they have the right insurance, and if they can provide a credit report, even better. Because what what I've learned is. You know, the credit report kind of lets me know if they can, if they know how to manage themselves. If they don't know how to manage themselves, then how the hell are they going to manage a business? And another thing, this is really important. When you're dealing with your contractors, you better make sure you know how many deals they're capable of doing. So, I mean, that's one of the first questions. I'm like, how big is your crew? How many deals can you do at one time? And so, let's say a guy says, I can do three deals a month. That's it. You know, I, I, and then... If he approaches me and says, hey, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to ramp up, I'm ready to go big, I'm, so then I, my, my next question is going to be, great, what's your plan? You know, what, what's changed? Where, where's your, did you just hire a, 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 a GC? You hire, you hire a, a, a general manager to manage your stuff? No. Well, what's changed? Nothing. I said, so you, wanna, you want more business, but you don't have, uh, you haven't hired any, any extra crews or any, so you got if, if somebody and this is this is a huge problem with a lot of these these good guys a, a lot of good contractors that mean well <coughs> excuse me they they want to get paid and can you blame them I mean hey good good for them you know that's awesome you want to get bigger cool no big deal but you know what you have to have a plan and nine times out of ten they don't. So I, I just tell them, hey, come back when you have a plan and we'll chat. You know, or look, you're going to need to do this, or you're going to need to duplicate. If you want to double your business, do, duplicate what you have. You need, and, and then you need maybe hire another guy to do what you're doing as well. Too. So it, 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 you know, everybody has a ceiling, and you, you, know, you need to know. It's good if you can find out before you, you start working with a guy what a ceiling is. Because once you know what a ceiling is, you keep that in mind. Then when he comes to you later, he can't lie. You know, I can do a lot more now. You know, no, you can't, because uh, when we first talked, you said you can only do three deals. So how are you gonna do two more deals a month? You, you can't, you don't have the manpower and you're hitting your ceiling. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, when, so buy right, rehab right, and then uh, resell. So this is a market where 70, 80% of the people are going online. So if you, we're, uh, we do extensive social media, uh, LinkedIn, I, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm even on, uh, I'm on Instagram, and I'm, I'm even on Snapchat, uh, God help me, uh, I'm just trying to figure that out right now. Um, of course, Facebook is the, uh, um, you know, is the uh, holy grail right now, um, so we've got a lot of different tricks that we're, we're working on and getting better and, and, and honing our craft. So. Uh, social media, 
Um, I email a lot of agents. I'm always talking to agents. I have a lot of agents calling me uh, looking for properties. Um, we, um, we push a lot of properties to the uh, private listing network, p and um, um, and it's, um, it's worked great for us. Knowing also the, um, the different grants and credit repair programs, we're able to take renters and convert them into to buyers. So you know, that's another thing too, is we get a lot of, we get a lot of calls in from our signs and, our, uh, and all of our different marketing techniques. So a lot of them can't qualify at this time. But what we do is we find, if we find somebody that's willing to do what they're supposed to do, we can convert them. And we, we know the best programs, the best toys, the best bells and whistles out there to get buyers to where they need to go. So um, these are some of the things that we do to help market our properties. You can't, you know, the problem is a lot of agents are list and leavers, right? So they, they get you to sign your agreement, they go over there, stick their sign to the ground, and they leave. And they, they wait for the almighty MLS to sell their house for them. And that just doesn't cut it these days, guys. Um, in, a, in a booming market, um, maybe, um, in, in a, a property that's in a hot area that you have priced aggressively, um, that you know is going to sell overnight, maybe. You don't need to do anything for it, maybe. But um, you never know. So this is a, a weird business. Um, we, we, don't, we don't leave uh, uh, anything to chance. You know, our, our business model is to throw everything at, the, at social media and, and to work our leads and to work our follow-up and work our databases mm -hmm. aggressively because that's really where the business is made. And we get a lot of referral business because we, we ask for referral business. So, um, yeah, just, uh, I don't know, I think I'm done, bro. I'm getting tired of talking, man, so man, it's just thinking. But no, I'm just kidding. No, so, uh, Frank, I, I, I got some questions for you as well. Um, so where do you think the market is heading um, this year? I mean, I think this is um, something as investors, a lot of investors are kind of, you know, the market's a little goofy right now. Things are selling on the bottom end for a little bit more, and then on the top end sometimes, they're selling for what they were before, coming down a little bit. What What's your predictions, and how do you beat this uh, this changing market that, that we're experiencing? Okay, so yeah, um, inventory is going to remain tight uh, through the MLS. So you know, there's there's a lot of different resources that we're you know I, I mean, and this is again you know um, I love the stress because it makes me grow, and so I mean just I I just scribble down some of the resources. Josh, that we use that we never even had to deal with before because I was hitting my ceiling, you know. But now, since the ML, you know, you know, you, most of you know, a property on, on the MLS, if it's in a hot area, there's going to probably be 40, 50 off cash offers on them if it's a wholesale piece, and you know, you're going to get a couple of dinglings that don't know what they're doing or they're being misguided by an agent that doesn't know what they're doing. So a lot of stuff's getting bid out. Uh, you, you, you can't win, right? So you gotta go off. Um, you, gotta, you gotta establish off market or, or non MLS resources. So we're actively uh, bidding at the sheriff's sale in several counties in, in Illinois and also in Northwest Indiana. And we're, we're getting a lot, a lot of success there. Um, we're, um, we're, we've started uh, doing the short sales. So we've, we've got, I think, one done so far. So that's another, that's not a big market for us. But, you know, you get properties and you know, you, you, you got something that's over, overpriced. You know, we're, we're, we, we're starting to learn that system. But that's just something we have to do now. We have to do these things because before everything's falling off the trees, you know, and everything is, it was like everything was on autopilot before. We do a lot of we, we do a lot of uh, bidding on auction.com, HubZoo, Hudson Marshall, VA, HUD, um, you know, on and on. Uh, we do we do have access to some off-market lists uh, of, from different companies. Uh, some of them are bulk list, so um, we're we're getting involved in that. We're buying a lot of the tax sale right now too. So 
Uh, that's something that's racing. We're kicking ass down there. Um, I've got a lot of, um, not, you know, being that I'm so popular and good looking, a lot of people come up to me with properties. And, uh, but no, seriously though, um, I proactively chase a lot of uh, off market resources, a lot of the wholesalers, a lot of the fake wholesalers. But they, you know, if I can get one deal a year from the fake wholesalers, hey, I'm happy. Okay. So, um, you know, again, so on the MLS, again, you're looking at, when you're looking at ranches, you're at, you're in better air locations. If I pop, put a top on it, can I, you know, can I get 200 grand more for it? Some areas you are. That's another way you're creating inventory. You know, we take two bedroom homes and we turn them into three bedroom homes above ground. See if Shirley, um, was there something I said? <laughs> the, uh, you know, we, um, yeah, we, we're, we're buying, we buy properties through some nonprofits. Uh, like Cook County Land Bank, um, you know, we're fortunate enough to get in with them and have their list uh, that's not available to the public. Uh, however, if you come through me, I can help you buy through them. Um, I've got some pretty creative stuff going on right now. Uh, I really can't tell you the details because I'd have to kill every one of you in this room. Uh, but I do have some pretty wild stuff we're doing that's working in the south suburbs. We're going to get a ton of properties off market. I really just can't, I really can't talk about that though because I'm not the only guy involved in it. I have other people. I got I to gotta respect their wishes. Uh, Indiana is another, uh, like I mentioned, it's another market. Expand your markets. Go out to Aurora. There's a lot of hot markets out there. Find a hot market. See what's get your realtor to work for you. Um, you know, um, another huge market is this buy hold. So I mean, you got guys, you know, like Andrew, and there's a lot of guys like that are just crushing it with buy buying a hold right now. So it's another avenue for you to say, look, if I can't find buy flips, let me get some buy hold. Let me get some some passive income as well too so you need to look at that avenue as well too um and i know you're doing some you're doing a lot of buy holes too so it, it it makes sense it makes sense um you know i've got guy you know i get a lot of weird stuff man i got guys coming at me with rental portfolios so we're flipping those things now anybody's interested in that please give me um um a call um we're we're dealing my my agents are working expireds, FISBOs, you know, blah, 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 all that kind of good stuff. Um, let me see if I got everything here. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, that pretty much is, uh, those are pretty much the, uh, now, the, this list that I just read off would be about that big, you know, like many years ago, you know, MLS, maybe a HUD website or something. I mean, HUD's actually HUD's not, not, not that good anymore, but, um, you know, but there was just really just a couple of resources and I had all the, you know, everything I needed uh, back then just off of two, three resources. You know, now, I mean, I'm going to like 25 resources to get properties and it's a grind. You know, that's why I said from the beginning, uh, make sure you understand when you're walking this game, you know, what you, what you got in front of you. It's a lot of hard work. And I love it, man. I, I just love what I do. Uh, I love this business. But it, it's going to be extremely difficult this year to get. I, I for the next couple of years, it's not going to change. So um, I don't see any shifts coming yet um, on uh, properties flooding the market and going on to the MLS. Um, a lot of people are doing what I'm doing, and they're finding creative ways to find properties. So they're not going to make them to the end. Uh, to the MLS, and we're getting into. Uh, I'm working with my my peoples, and we're going to start doing chasing free foreclosures too. You know, a lot more hard work, right? Yeah, I think I think you really hit the nail on the head there. Where you're mentioning like off markets, the way to go. Mm -hmm. I think if you're relying on the MLS right now, if you're trying to flip a house, you're you're going to lose money or break even if you're lucky. You can get lucky. Um, you know, if, if it's a really bad weather day, 
Uh, those are good days to go outside and get properties because you, your competition's down. Um, so if it's zero degrees, those are the days to go out. If wow. it's like, you know, pouring rain, uh, heavy snow, super cold, your competition, and, and you know, and the problem too is with a lot of these banks, they're saying, hey, I need to have uh, uh, marketing time. I have, I have to have let the property season, you know, maybe a week, maybe 10 days, maybe 14 days. Um, by then, all the Tom, Dick, and Harrys are in the game, and they jack the prices up. Now, if you find out that, you know, what I call the listing agent of, hey, how fast, you know, can I get a response, and can I get, is there any marketing time? No, there's no, they have no seasoning time, that, and if it's a really bad day, I know, I know I'm going to get the property because there's not a lot of people who are going to be out those days. So this is the year where you have to have a plan. You have to, you have to, you have to create a business plan and you have to stick to it consistently. And if you do, I guarantee that you will be successful. If not, your money will be refunded within 30 days. Okay. So what? What, what else you got for me? So um, my, my brother just met with a, a guy yesterday who just got absolutely crushed mm -hmm. by hiring the wrong contractor. Um, how do you avoid that? Um, this is one of, Juan was saying, it was probably one of the worst he's ever seen. Okay, so uh, what's mo most important is when you talk to a contractor, it's, you know, you ever see that, uh, you guys ever see the Saturday Night Live, the, the, those Bears guys? You know, the Bears fans or whatever, yeah. super fans. So, like, when they had somebody talking to them, they were, they, that one time when they were, they were in some kind of seminar, and this guy's talking, and they're just wandering. This guy's talking about some high intelligent thing, but they're just, they, they, they show inside their minds, Bears, Ditka, Polo Sausage. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the point is this. When a contractor comes to you, you should be the same thing, Bears, Ditka, Polo Okay, you done, Boro? You done? You done? Okay, shut the fuck up, man. Now give me three people that I can talk to that you did business with. Give me three, give me a couple address. How many projects are you working on now? You're not working on any projects now? Why aren't you working on any projects now? Did, people don't like you, you're not good? You screwed people, what, what, what's going on, man? So you have, I, I, I never rely, you know, with, without, without any, you, usually uh, what happens is I, I get a lot of people coming to me on a regular basis. Hey man, I'm out looking for work. I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I, I'm not your guinea pig, bro. Ain't happening here, man. Go out, make a name for yourself, get, get some business, come back, show me what you're doing. I don't, I, I don't do first timers. I'm only doing people that are successful in this business. You only wanna, don't, you know, don't, don't fall into the game. Hey man, I'll work for free. I'll work for a damn near free. I need, the, I need a job, I need it. Well, I'm not looking to hire that man. I'm looking to hire somebody uh, that knows that is successful because they have to know how to run a business. You know, everybody thinks that being a G, you know, GC is the easy thing, it's not. You have to manage a crew, which takes a special talent, managing people, and then you need to be able to manage uh, your book, your, your, uh, your finances. So if you have somebody that's new, you have so much risk there. And you know what? Most of these guys are good guys, right? Most, not all. And I've seen a lot of good ones screw up. And make, and make sure, uh, and want to make sure that you, um, you ask them, you know, what, what's, what's he currently doing? What's his capability? Because if, the, if, if he does more, the, if he bites off more than he can chew, then either A, his uh, performance is going to go down dramatically, or B, he will, um, he's just going to fall apart. I, I've seen it way, way too many times, you know, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that, Frank. So obviously getting references is really important. Um, I'll get, I have two examples of this, of contractors that actually were, uh, one contractor, um, I asked him for addresses of projects he worked on, and I think two or three of them were properties that Frank had listed, and so I guess he didn't think I would follow up and find out. 
So this contractor is saying, oh yeah, I did the work on, you know, 8233 South May or, you know, whatever the addresses were. I call Frank. Frank, I'm like, Frank, you ever heard of this guy? He said he did the work here. Frank's like, no, let me find out with the owner. The owner never heard of him. So when yeah, you I call validate, the general up too. Huh? I call, I actually call the, he's well, then he goes, he goes from that to, well, I, I worked on the thing. Yeah. I said, okay. I said, I called the general up. He goes, never heard of him. Yeah. So, you know, so follow that, up your leads. Yeah, that definitely, other. yeah, you get references, validate. And then another contractor comes to mind, which Frank could get a good laugh out of this. This guy had Frank, he had a brochure. It was a nice brochure. And uh, Frank was on page two that Frank was his premier partner. I'm not going to say who this uh, contractor was, but, you know, there was a blown up picture of Frank that Frank worked with him. And, um, Frank calls me one day and he's like, hey, what do you think of this contractor? And I was like, what do you mean, Frank? He's like, yeah, what do you think of this contractor? I said, you're on page two of his brochure. Frank didn't, so people, so what I'm getting at is people will completely, um, you definitely need to check, check those. Luckily, I never worked with him, but if, if I were to ever work with them, like that would obviously be the person I called and the guy was getting away with it for like two years. So it's, it's definitely something that, um, you know, you got to check those references. Um, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, you have to talk to other people because it doesn't matter what they say. They're, all, they're either going to lie and then you can substantiate their, uh, what they tell you by talking to other people. And if they're, they don't, if they're not doing business, you get, don't you kind of think maybe they're not that good? You know, or they've screwed people, they've burned bridges. That's not when I, I, I really have never run into anybody that's not currently doing business that I, I'll, I'll do business with. Because if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I'm the bomb, I'm the best thing to slice bread, I'm like, show me the money. What you got? Oh, you got nothing. Goodbye. Because they, they're, all they're doing is they're, they're trying to hustle me. And if they start off lying that way, then they're going to lie about a lot more. Yeah, because there's a lot of good there's a lot of good talkers out there, um, so definitely uh, check <laughs> check and validate those 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 sources. Um, so we talked about finding the deals. We talked about the construction. Um, I think you really you kind of glossed over it a little bit, but um, I think one of the amazing things you're doing is definitely um, I think one one of the reasons why you're extremely successful, Frank, is that you have the end buyer, you start with the end buyer. So me, what do I mean by that? You have these programs for people with challenged credit. So talk about a little bit about that as well, because I think that's so important when you have a rehabbed house, you know, if, if you're just relying on the MLS versus you've groomed buyers for, you know, some of these buyers I think you've probably worked with for, for a year, two years. Oh yeah, we've had, um... God, exactly. We've had buyers that are an abomination credit-wise, and they come up two years later. Like, I got a call from one of my loan officers, hey, guess what, that lead you gave me two years ago? I'm like, okay, uh, yeah. He goes, yeah, we finally got approved. I'm like, sweet, dude. But I mean, yeah, uh, I want to work with, uh, you, you, and you want to work with people that get some shit done, you know, basically. Um, I, I don't take me. To the Bulls game, please don't don't waste your time, man. Get the deal done. Uh, let's co-market together. You know, let's do do something uh, from a business point of view um, for me. Um, help help us out with the open houses. I mean, we average about 10 open houses a week, and uh, my agents will do call arounds and uh, invite the neighbors, have hand out flyers. Um, so we we generate a lot of business that way. And when they come through whatever source we, we, we get to capture them, we get a lot of people that need work. So there's, you know, there's basically that market, right, of buyers that got their shit together and they're perfect, you know, everything, money, credit, all that stuff. Then there's the people that, and they're, they know, you, you can't tell them any, they're, when they're ready, they're ready and they're go, right? And then there's the, the other group that, um, is probably um, never ever gonna go anywhere in life. 
So we probably all have something like that in our family, or I don't know, you know, maybe maybe you do, you know, I don't know, or some friends or something. You know, you can give them a million dollars and they'll spend it overnight, and they'll, it's gone. You know, the, you, the, those people we just leave alone. We can't help them because they won't help themselves. Then you got that third group of people that are renters, and that's the market that we we market to. I want those people that are renters that are willing to fix stuff. They just don't know how to do it. Or, and or they've been misled, which happens a lot. They went to some I, mortgage companies that have jerked them around and uh, some credit repair people that have jerked them around. So, you know, I, I'm just obsessive, compulsive, look, always looking for the best vendors that can help these people. But that's our market. And that, you know, so you're looking to uh, to find buyers in hard, tough times, man. Realtors need to get, re, need to adopt this philosophy: is go hit that pool of dormant buyers. The people that are sitting around, they just don't, they don't know where to go. They don't know who to talk to. So we do a lot of marketing, you know, uh, in, in that as well too. So we'll, you know, we'll market, say we can help you with your credit repair. We can help you, you know, we, we'll have testimonials. We'll do all kinds of uh, cool things like that. So yeah, I mean. That's what we do that separates us. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, pre-approved buyers at any given time, and we have a ton in, uh, in credit repair that will that are eventually come out. So it's like a, it's, it's almost, you know, I, I, I tell some people, it's all, I, I feel like I almost, like I have a, uh, not, I don't want to say a nine to five job, but I mean, I almost feel like I have a salary because I know I'm gonna get X amount of dollars every year because either somebody on my team or myself, we're, we're generating we know there's people coming down the pike that are gonna, that, that are gonna work out. So you have, if you wanna, okay, look, if you wanna grow big, if you wanna get big, this is what we do. This is how we play. You just don't stick a sign in your ground. Hey, I'm gonna go with a discount broker, man. You know, you stick a sign in the ground, man. I'm gonna save myself. Really? So you're gonna save yourself a few bucks and the property takes uh, uh, another six months to sell. And you get less. And you get less money, good for you. you know, or you get somebody that's, that's actively, proactively uh, moving your properties. That makes a lot more sense to me. So. Yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't think you have a nine to five. I think you told me you had two hours of sleep last night. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah. I'm so falling would, asleep right now. A, that would be, that would be, yeah, because you wake up, if, if you know Frank, he'll call you like, Three o'clock in the morning, and he's, well, he's ready. Up? He's working. <laughs> Wait, but you're not up, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm sleeping until five. I, I can't keep up. <laughs> no, I'm normally up. I'm normally up around four thirty, but I have my moments. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Frank, I, I, I want to get your advice to somebody. Maybe somebody in here that's never done a deal. Um, what would you tell them? What do they need to do? Because obviously, you so, told us it's not easy. But what do they need to do to, to get that first deal done? Who do they need to surround themselves with? How do, what do they need to do? First and foremost, if you don't have money, honey, you ain't going anywhere. You ain't getting on the plane, baby. So you gotta get the, you gotta get the funding, right? And so there's, I, you know, I, I know a ton of resources, but you still have to bring some money to the game. I mean, there's some programs out there uh, that will let you get away with, uh, 10% down. Um, there's some 100% programs out there as well too. So um, you're gonna pay for it. You know, you, you will pay. But you want to surround yourself with people like uh, that are on my team that know what they're doing. And you know, you know, you 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 have to you have to get a you have to get your lend your lending in, in order. Um, you have, and I know I've talked to somebody here tonight that was struggling with. Uh, he got advice from an, another prominent uh, guy, and uh, the, those lenders are just dropping a ball, man. So um, it's important that you get the right lender, and they're all, a lot of these hard money lenders are different. They're across the board. They have different products. Um, and then you want to you know, you get together with a team that's going to uh, work for you, not for themselves. So I'm, I'm telling you, man, there's some agents out there, and now with this pressure, uh, a lot of them are just out for themselves. They're just looking for a paycheck to keep their lights on. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's serious stuff. So you have to be careful who you surround yourself with. Make sure you're dealing with people that are, that are successful. You can, look, you can look and see what their numbers are. You, know, you can see what, what people are doing. You can, see, you know, you can talk, to, uh, talk around about other people, see what they say about them. I'm sure you'll hear nothing negative about me, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that was one of the biggest mistakes I made when I started out is I, uh, I listened to the wrong agents that told me, hey, I think you could sell this for this, and they didn't have the, our best interest at heart. They were thinking of the short-term paycheck. And obviously, you're not doing the volume that you're doing. Um, you're not making the, the impact that you're making um, by thinking short-sighted of, hey, let me get somebody into a bad de deal so I get a paycheck. So let me just add one thing, too. I don't care if it's your relative. Um, I don't care if the person, your agent's a nice guy or a nice girl or whatever. That don't pay the bills, honey. So you got to get, you got to surround yourself uh, with people that that are successful in this business, that think like a business person, that will guide you and look out for your interests first. You know, my, my whole philosophy is I just help other people. I love helping people. I just, you know, my oldest kid has that philosophy too. So I, I love it, man. You know, it always puts a smile on my face when I hear him talk about business. And um, if you, uh, the thing I've learned just by default, because I'm just so unwired, because what I've learned from my dad is if I help other people, I'm gonna, I will get paid, and I, I will be successful. I don't have to put myself first, and uh, you know, it was just a night, just by default, you know, I, I walk down the the road less traveled. By Robert Frost. <laughs> well, tw in 22 hours of uh, work a day, that all. <laughs> that helps too. You, out, you outwork I will, everyone. Uh, let me just add one more thing. I will outwork you. In case you were, you're doubting that, I will beat you like a redhead stepchild did, when it comes to work. Did you read... Uh, I didn't say that out loud, did I? Did, 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 I did you read uh, Goggins? You know Goggins? Yeah. i got to get you that book. It's okay. really good. He might outwork you, Frank. He's, he's, well, there, I, I, he's, not, he's not an agent, though. So I, I know another agent that probably <laughs> outworks me. So... Um, hmm. I could do. I only could do what I can do. I have my limits. I hit my ceiling. Trust me. Um, I know you had a question. Yeah. All the sources that you need to find a deal. Uh, have you ever bought a house sight unseen? Outside the city? No, uh, sight unseen. You've never seen it before. Oh yeah, all, all the time. So um, yeah, you know, sheriff sales. Um, uh, we're buying uh, some NPLs right now too, uh, non-performing loans. So. What we have to do is, um, you know, there, there's a risk factor, obviously. Um, you know, there, when we, pro, we want to make sure, we, we try to get inside the house if we can. And uh, if we can't, um, you know, we try to look through the windows. If we can't, we, uh, we take pictures. And uh, we, if somebody's living there, um, we still, we treat it as a full gut rehab either way. So. Um, you know, we've, I've seen some people, you know, they, when they've got evicted, they've torn the place apart. So they feel, you know, they, the ones that go in that full victim mode, they're like, I'm going to get even, you know, even though I fucked up and I didn't pay my bills and stuff, it's your fault. So I'm going to screw the, you know, screwed. So we just assume that uh, we're going to, we're going to um, um, get a, get a problem properly, property or something is going to be wrong with it. Um, or there's something structurally is going to be wrong with it. So we kind of just brace, you know, and we, we, we add in a, uh, depending on the house and the area and stuff, and the likelihood of that, we'll, we'll add in a factor, uh, a cushion factor uh, to protect. But yeah, we, you know, you know, a lot of times too, it's, you know, you can go online and Google it, and the property maybe may have had pictures in the past too, or maybe it was being sold before uh, they lost the property. Which is cool because then I can find out how many beds, baths, count. You know, I I know what I'm walking into. Because if I get a two-bedroom house, I rather get a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve-bedroom house than a two-bedroom house. Uh, because if it's a two-bedroom house, then that changes the dynamics of of the value. Unless I can could take a dining room and convert it into a bedroom, then I'm cool, baby. Did I answer your question? 
Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, always, always it comes, especially if, if, if you're just starting out, you got to buy it, buy it right, absolutely, if you're going to buy it sight unseen. Play, play conservative. Yeah. Because, I mean, when I first started out, I think some of my first properties were sight unseen, but I got lucky. <laughs> so, could have uh, been a lot worse. I'll tell you a story. So, uh, I had a guy buy a property at Sheriff's Sale, and it was actually a custom built ranch in Chatham. And great looking house from the outside. Here's the kicker this guy had the kitchen in the front room. So, when you walk open the front door, it's like you're in a condo on the north side. You walk straight in the kitchen. Now, that doesn't play on the south side. You know, it's a lot more traditional on the south side. So I told him, real easy, dude, re the front, move the door from the right side to the left. I said, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I said, well, then you're gonna, lose, you're gonna lose like 50 grand. So a year and a half later, he lost 50 grand. Because he was stubborn. Because he thought he knew more than me. Can you imagine somebody actually <laughs> thought they knew more than me? Good God. What, what is this world coming to? Frank, I, I want to get your opinion on this. Can you ever, when you're selling a house, and, and this is, I don't know, this is an extremely ob objective opinion, but can you ever underprice a home when you're trying to, let's say you have a house. Well, can when, I, when, or, or do I, do I well, purposely on well, that? Well, what I'm getting at is, I, the reason why I'm asking is, let's say you have a property that's, that's hard to sell. Yeah. What's your thoughts of, of listing it a little bit below market? You know, obviously a full transparency with the, with the owners of, hey, this would, because I've seen it time and time again. You have a property that's sitting on the MLS, it's sitting at a certain price. You know, it's accumulated almost a year's worth of, um, year's worth of market time, and then they do like a, sometimes like a 10, 20K drop, and then all of a sudden they've got four offers on it. So if we know it's a hard to sell property right out the gate, um, I, I have a conversation um, with the seller. I'm saying, look, you know, um, I don't think it's going to sell for a while. So we can do one or two things. We just let it sit and rot, or we can do an aggressive price campaign. So we can weekly drop until we hit the sweet spot. You know how they have those radars in these boats where you can see where the fish pull is? It's the same thing. You want to keep dropping that and dropping that and dropping until you hit, until you hit the fish pull where people start, uh, you know, you get the showings and you get the, uh, you, you get the contracts in. So I, I like uh, what I've, you know, what I've, rather than getting like real crazy, you know, just keep dropping it every week, unless you gotta move, unless it's now, hey, I wanna move it now, all right, well, let's drop it 20 grand then, let's go. But otherwise, I kinda like that, that weekly drip drop. Like that's what it, yeah, it's the name. Yeah, I mean, I had, uh, you know, I had one recently where we just dropped it five grand, and I'm like, it's way lower than what I wanted to sell, and then we ended up getting an offer, like, 15 to 20, almost over what we were asking. So sometimes you just got to hit that sweet spot because uh, we were in multiple offers. Yeah, so that's an important thing too. Uh, so let me hit on this too. So a lot of people think they're really cool and they're really smart, you know, because they watch a lot of HGTV, so now they got their shit together, man. So, I mean, I, I deal with sellers, I'm like, oh, please don't do this. So, you know, like, I'll have an appraiser come and say, hey, this thing's worth $400,000. Okay, we're going to start at four fifty. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, wait, wait what, 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 you know? Yeah, you know, I know more than you, and I know more than the market. And then the property sits, and it doesn't, it doesn't sell. And then we gotta, you know, and, and you lose a tremendous amount of market time. Don't, you know, now here's the one, there's, when I see a market like rapidly changing, even upward, I'll, I'll make a suggestion. Hey, let's price this. I remember I had a house in Bellwood and we're right after the crash, Bell, Bellwood got hammered and I just saw the tidal wave coming. So this guy said, hey, I'll sell it for X amount of dollars. I said, I want you to list it for $40,000 buyer. So we listed for forty thousand dollars higher. We got an offer for thirty-two thousand higher, so eight thousand less. So um, he said, "Man, I'll, he was happy getting it for forty thousand. He goes, "I'll take." So you want me to counter? He goes, "No, I'll just take it, man." I'm like, "Okay." And guess what? The kid was right, and it appraised for that amount. So, you know, I, this is 
something you can't buy. My ex the experience I've got, I just you know, I, I can read a scenario. You know, it's like a like a NFL quarterback when you see him, uh, except for maybe Trubisky. No offense, <laughs> but uh, you see like that other who's the other guy? Falls. You see him coming up to the line, man. You know he's check. You know he's reading the defense. He's looking at. Yeah, you know, he knows what, what they're going to do. So um, it, it's the same thing. When I, when I come into a property, I look at a, a, a scenario, I, I know what's going to happen. You know, I, I know a lot more than you guys do just because of my experience and because I've been to the plate thousands and thousands of times, and I, I pay attention to what I'm doing. We'll do a couple questions, and then uh, we'll wrap up. So, um, you know, well, it's kind of like some of the stuff that I hit earlier, like, you know, we, we determine, first of all, we determine if we can sell it, you know, what the saleability factor is. So, like, we look at the outside, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's all apartment buildings on this block. Uh, there's no way in the world. If, for us to buy it, it's, we're going to we're gonna have to go 50 grand less than market value and be prepared for it to sit for a while because people don't want to, you know, I mean, I don't know a whole lot of people who want to buy a house and be, be on a block with uh, 24 unit buildings and you're the only house. And, and we see that all the time. So, you know, we, uh, and there's, that's an extreme case, but there's other scenarios The you know, you're across from a school, you're across, you know, you got to take a lot of things into consideration. So we want to know how, how long is it going to take to sell the house based on the outside. And then we, then it's all a numbers game, baby. So where, what's your ROI? And then if the number, you know, if the number fits, you must not acquit. So you, you, uh, uh, if you, you, let's say you're like, hey, um, my ROI is 15%, my ROI is 20%, 25%, whatever it is. If the property, it, it, it's just a math, a mathematical equation then. Um, yeah, get we, a deal, an, deal analyzer, you can download just yeah. several different ones you can get, but yeah, figure out what return you're looking for and then that's, if it hits that number and it's it, validated that it's, yeah, you can get this number. It's all math. Because yeah. what, what, what are you doing? Your, your, your job is to make a profit. So what is, you know, pro, you know, it becomes math. That's it. Don't, you know, and what people make a mistake is they fall in love with, a, oh my God, I grew up with a Georgian. I, I love this Georgian. I'm going to ask $30,000 more because... You know, I mean, I, you know, like you, you can't allow your emotions to get involved in transactions. Keep it strictly professional. And when you're looking at your numbers, you look at the numbers. Nothing else matters. You know, you look, you determine. I got a saleable property. I can sell this within 30 days. Um, I know I can get X amount of return. I expect my carrying charges to be X amount based on that. I know what I'm walking into. Um, I like low risk or lower risk situations. Uh, if they're higher risk, then the return's gonna be a lot higher. You know, if I know it's gonna sit for a year, then you know, we may have to have a double, you know, the 20% may have to be 40% or 35%. You know, it's kind of like whatever an investor is interested in, 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 in taking out what kind of risk and what type of return he's willing to take for that risk. So, but end of the day, keep it simple, stick with the numbers, keep your emotions out of it. I want to add to that too. I don't know, you might have, because I believe I heard you originally talk about it. Uh, frame versus brick in the south side and how that can affect your values. Yeah, so, um, yeah, fr uh, frames are not really uh, that well accepted on the south side, unless it's a really good area. Although, I, you know, that's been changing uh, over the years. I've seen it for 35 years, and a long time ago, more and more frames, people are just like, hey, man, you know, I don't want to live near a cemetery. I don't want to live in a frame. I mean, I've heard that a million times when I was as a buyer's agent when I started off in the business. A lot of that's changed. And so what you do when you get a frame is you just provide excessive value. You put, you put the bling in. You put the nice light. You don't cut corners. You know, you don't put the cheap lights in you. You know, you put the, you put, you throw a, a three, four, five extra grand in, and it's going to sell. And so, 
frames are, are well, anyway, if you if you got a frame in Beverly, Hyde Park, Pill Hill, no problem. You know, they'll, they'll sell because people want that, that area that they'll put their voodoo um, psycho philosophies or whatever they got, you know, crazy, you know, craziness aside. Uh, but I've noticed more and more that some other areas are, <coughs> are, are selling are selling frames well that wouldn't in the past, like South Shore. So it's a case by case basis, but I see a shift going now, an upward shift going now on the si on the north side. Frame, brick, stucco, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, car or whatever you know. Garage. I mean, it's you know, it doesn't matter. North side's a north side, man. They're, they just need to put, you know, they're they're cool. Maybe the south side's, you know, we're we're kind of crazy down there, man. We got all kinds of crazy ideas, and, and, and we watch too many horror movies. And shit. What you know, what so. what's uh? You you talked about bling. What's some of the best bling you can do on the south side or anywhere that you think that's really cool? That buyers when they walk in, they're like, wow. What's what's something that really makes people uh? So what's uh, that wow factor? Let's just go room by room. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's say you bought a let's say you bought a house. And you're like, God, how the hell am I going to? Why did I buy this? So you walk into the living room. Um, what when we get to really really bad houses? What I recommend is you can get these wood medallions and put them in the floor. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're like oval around. And they're badass mofos, man. And they make the room pop. You do not want to, and there's a lot of lighting now that you can get for next to nothing. Um, Erica, you had, where, where's, where's that one where they had that like diamond ring? That uh, was. On Chappelle, it was a chandelier that literally looked like a diamond finish bracelet. Yeah, it was crazy. a video about it just of the uh, lighting fixtures. How did it happen? Bling, bling out your, um, you, you, you want to what you want to do is have like a conversation piece in every room so those you can buy those uh, uh, those medallions for two three hundred dollars not a big expense uh, you can also do the uh, you know the like uh, like this trim here you can do the fake version of it uh, in the living room and, and that always looks really well when you're in a ranch house um, you want to run the roof lines uh, run the the ceilings up the roof lines and put in a few uh, skylights. That's a freaking hot look, to, and that just you know that you do that in a ranch and your chances and that, and that doesn't cost that much. You know that's like two three thousand three. You know, well, you know for the the labor and the, and the drywall and stuff is like a couple two three thousand dollars. You know so that's a hot you know a really really hot look. You know when you walk into a boxy little Ranch, you know, ranches are hard to open up, you know, so that's, you, know, you walk in and it's a real boxy look when you want, in, in, in this way here you walk in and it's like, it gives it an open, airy feel, you know, it gives it a more modern feel, that's hot. Um, so living room, you know, I do the Wayne's coat, the, the, the fake Wayne's coating, uh, the medallion, really cool lighting, um, lots of lighting where you would, um, uh, where you think people would sit. Uh, especially if you got stay, you know, if you're gonna stage it, you know, you're gonna want to have lighting in place where the staging is too. Just you know, common sense stuff. Um, you um, dining room, uh, kind of the same, very similar thing. You know, if you got a dining room, uh, the the lighting fixture, you want to spend a few more bucks on that. You know, get you know, if you could spend uh, um, four or five hundred dollars, you can get a really kick-ass lighting fixture. And you know, a dining room is a dining room. It's just a big open room. And uh, you put Wayne's coating on, and and you have your hard, nice uh, hardwood floors. So you know there, there's a lot of you know a lot of things about the hardwood floors. They say you know that that shiny finish looks phenomenal when you see it. But start walking around on it, start living on it, and start moving your furniture on scratches up. It shows everything. So it's you know we're we're always. You know, we're always looking for a better product. You know, if, it, if you have that muted uh, floors, you know, they look, they look great and they're, they just, you know, they just hide the, 
you know, the scratch is better than the, uh, uh, than the shiny floors. The shiny floors look dope, so I'm kind of always, you know, trying to figure out which, which to use there. Uh, bathrooms, um, you know, you, you want to tile up to the ceiling. Uh, you, want to, you want to tile, you want to do a backsplash. Uh, you, know, you know, moms are going to come in and they're like, oh, wow, cool, man. I don't, I'm not going to get the walls, I'm not going to get destroyed by my kids, uh, you know, in the morning. And so the backsplash is behind, you're behind the sinks, the vanities. Um, you know, the, a lot of, you know, if you really want to trick something up, too, like I like the, um, the little nooks and crannies. Uh, you know, you, you want to have really cool tile in the bathrooms. And then you want to have like a really cool border. There's, there's lots of uh, uh, really neat stuff. And then you can also have like little nooks and crannies where you put your soaps and shampoos and, and people like that. And I mean, there's, we've played around with those, um, we've kind of moved away from them because of the pressure isn't always good. There, you know, those things that look like spaceships where you walk into and they have like disco lights and a radio and all that stuff in there. I mean, it's really cool. I, uh, we've just seen a lot of problems with them. So we'll, 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 we'll go to a, uh, just a cool like uh, body spray or you know, multi-handle thing something that's practical. Um, you know, like I said, every room, you know, kitchens, um, if you get a room to put an island in, uh, definitely backsplash, you know, just have a really interesting tile. Spend a little extra money on the backsplash because that's, you know, that's more at eye level. I mean, you could have really cool flooring and all that stuff, and or you can buy a four, you know, I won't say cheap, I'll say affordable tile and have a really kick-ass border and you can take ordinary tile and make the room pop with a really cool border. So, you know, there's, and then, yeah, your bathrooms have to, you know, your bathrooms have to have nice tile. So you don't, you know, that's where it really makes a difference. You know, and women, you know, you know, when you, the kitchens and bathrooms, you can't cut quarters on. Get nice appliances. You know, you can get, you know, you can, you can get a nice package of appliances for under $3,000, you know, for, for homes, you know, in the affordable range. And then, of course, you know, if you're going to do million dollar houses, you're, you're going to want, you know, better, uh, better appliances. And of course, finish the basements, have bathrooms on every floor. So people, you know, I mean, I, I have, you know, you'd be surprised so many times, like I'll have a Georgian and they were built, there's Georgians that are built with no bathrooms on the first floor. And the people say, man, I don't want to keep running up and down the stairs every time I got to go number one or number two, you know? So, I mean, I, I mean, it, it's going to prolong the sale of the house. So, um, yeah, I mean, those are, um, and make sure you have a garage, man. People love garages, central air, you know, the, the, those kind of items. Don't, don't, don't cut those corners, you know, because also if you need, if you bought it, if you made a bad buy, you want to make sure you got to go bling, you got to bling it out and you don't need to spend a ton of money. You just need to spend money spend an extra four or five grand and you can you and you look at it as an investment to um, um, to help sell your property quicker yeah, awesome one last question so it's got to be good all right uh, yeah areas that I can't resell in so right now, certain areas in Roseland, certain areas in Englewood, Robbins, um, um, Fort Heights. I mean, you know, it's some of the areas, you know, the Phoenix is really weird. Um, you know, there's certain areas over southeast I got to be careful of. They're not, they're, they're not saleable. So it's, you can go, I can go into Roseland and, and sell the shit out of one area in Roseland. In other areas, I can't move a property. So it's not even, you know, the, the area sometimes has, you know, three, four different things going on in it. You know, you take Roseland and, you, you know, it's got, you know, Rosemore and, you know, then there's the northern section with all the frames and, that are well kept and 
so it's um, we we just go by um, we we look and see what's happening in that specific area surrounding area. If we see if, if somebody gives us a house, we're going to want to find out if it's saleable. That's number one. If it's saleable, the next thing is to cut our emotions out of it, and we go strictly to um, uh, numbers. Because this is a numbers game, baby. Um, you talked about blinging it out. What's the paint color you're recommending right now on the south side? You know, um, I kind of like uh, orange. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, so I'll tell you a quick story. So I went, this guy, uh, a guy got this investor this really, really kick-ass house in Phil Hill. So I don't normally, you know, I'm not a field guy. But I'm like, okay, man, I'm going out, take a look at this thing, I want to see what he did with it. So I walk in, I'm like, what the, f you know, he's got like neon orange in the in the living room, and then I go in the kitchen, it's neon yellow, with black uh, granite, I mean, grab black marble. I'm like, what the, f and then I go into the kitchen, the bathroom, it's like all black and white. I mean, but not like, a, I mean, I like black and white, but this was like all in the wrong places. It's like a fun house. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, dude, I called him up. I said, dude, I am going to kill you when I see you. Don't you ever do this again. Famous last words. That was a Friday. The next day, I had five contracts what? sitting in front at full price or higher. And so we took one, of course, and we closed that. But I got a phone call from a lady, and she's like, um, uh, don't know how to tell you this, but um, I'm just going to come out and ask you. Do you have anything else with, with hood bling? And I'm like, say that again? <laughs> so, um, yeah, but that was the last time we did that. So, um, um, yeah, you know, uh, we're still, you know, we're, we're still playing with grays. I mean, you know, the, the, the Browns and the, you know, the Browns and, and, and uh, Burgundies are, are still going. I saw somebody with the Browns and Burgundies the other day. I'm like, dude, that's, wow, you know, that's no. like so 1980s, man. You know, so, um, yeah, it's still a, blu you know, a, um, a gray, gray blue. blue. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying we're doing gray, blue. We're yeah, doing this gray blue right now. It's beautiful. And cabinets colors, too. Yeah. So those, you know. You know, mixing the cabinet colors up with the blues, and the, and and another thing that's that's hot now too is, you know, I I you know, and if I offend you, you know, too bad, okay, because um, I hate brass. I'm just not a brass guy. But what I do like is is brushed brass. That's badass, and that's huge right now. That's hot right now. So that's coming to town, baby. I recommend uh, if you're going to do the brush brass, um, I've got one right now where they they have the brush brass handles on the cabinets mm -hmm. and they matched the brush brass look for the grout color with the white tile. Ooh. It looks amazing. It ties. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Right it. But yeah, that looks really good with that um, the brush brass. Now, you got it's got to be good because it, So, um, so, so there's, you know, okay, so this is where um, I can't give you like a one plus one, it's, it's an art. So I look, I evaluate, uh, what I do is I evaluate it from the outside first. If I determine from the outside that I can't sell the property based on the neighborhood or based on the block, mm -hmm. then I move on. Then I go inside and then we determine whether um, the first thing we look at is, is this a, a functional house? And if it's not, then we need to, we need to make it functional. So uh, that might mean moving walls and figuring out these structural walls and we need to have structural beams, all this kind of stuff. Then, you know, once we figure out that outs the outside is cool and the inside is cool, then we figure out the numbers. 
Okay, so let's say let's say you you come to me and say I'm an investor. I'm, I need 20% return. I'm like, okay, well you're going to need to spend five thousand dollars more on this house because it's not structurally sound, or we're going to have to move walls, and we have to have structural beams, so it's going to cost a lot more money. So to hit your 20%, you're going to have to offer X amount of dollars on this house. So that's kind of the procedure. Now the part that I can't really teach you from a mathematical point of view is examining the outside of, you know, that's just something that, you know, we've had years and years of experience. So I can drive down a block and say, look, based on the hundreds of properties I've sold like this, um, it's going to take X, X amount of time longer to sell and X amount of dollars less to sell. I'll give you an example. This may help you. Um, there was two properties in Beverly and say on, on the same block, we bought one and we closed it. And a year later, the investor that bought the other, we wouldn't buy the other one because the other one had a, a dilapidated 11 unit building right next to it. I knew that we couldn't pay. We, we tried to buy it. We couldn't buy, buy it for our adjusted value. And they said, no, this other one sold for, uh, you know, for 60,000. So we're going to sell, sell ours for 60,000. The problem is, is I knew it was going to sell for 30 to $40,000 less because people don't want to live next to that. That's something I, that's hard. You know, I can't, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just can't say, Hey, one plus one equals two here. You just, yeah, it's, it's, it's right. Precisely. It's, it's case by case. So, um, you know, that being said, um, you know, the guy asked me, well, how come mine hasn't sold? I said, I said, cause you're 40,000 over value. He goes, what? I said, but you guys sold that thing for $200,000. I'm like, that's what it's worth. Yours is worth 160, 170,000. You're way overpriced. He goes, well, then I, I don't have, uh, I don't get any, any return if I sell it for that amount. I said, how's that working out for you? I said, you may want to bail now sooner than later because your money's tied up and you, you've got fixed cost. So that's what a lot of people don't understand that, you know, you think, you know, hey, I'm, I'm buying the same property, but because of the outside, it messes up the, the buyers, you know, it's not what the X's and O's say all the time. It's going to be what is, a, and, and this is where you, the intangible, you can't put a, a, a value on it. Uh, it's like, what is a buyer going to say when he looks at, you know, this, uh, this little shitty looking rundown 11 unit building that the, the seller doesn't give a rat's ass about, collected his rent, doesn't care about anything, but he, he, he's dragging down the values right there. So that's, does that explain you, you know, kind of help you out a little bit? Okay. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Well, everyone, uh, please give a huge round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Frank Montro. Two hours of sleep here for you, and you, and you, and you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much.